Welcome back to another video where I'm sharing my journey in 3D printing and starting a small 3D print business. In last week's video, I kind of went over some issues I was having printing off PETG, specifically using Polymakers and the issues I was having with the build plate. And it was ghosting. I did get a lot of feedback from you guys and tips in the comments, so I do appreciate that. I did try some things, and as you can see here, I've pretty much ruined a whole plate, I think, with that. And I think what the issue is, it's basically a Polymaker PETG issue. I haven't had this issue on any of the Bamboo Lab PETG that I've been using. It's almost like it just sticks too well to the build plate, which a lot of people did say. And then to get some of this ghosting off of the build plate, I did try putting some ISO on there and then burning it off with a torch multiple times and then trying to clean it with either dish soap or using a magic eraser and it's still showing up. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's with setting it on fire and trying to scrub it off. And for some reason it is just not coming off of there. So that was an issue. This might be a plate that's dedicated to this model now, but on the other side, I listened to some of your comments and started putting glue on the build plate. And then I also changed the bed temperature. It was automatically defaulting to 80 degrees Celsius. On Polymaker's spool here, it says anywhere from 70 to 80 degrees. So I changed it down to 70 and put a layer of glue on here. And actually this turned out worse than not using any of that. So you can see it did ghost this pretty good as well, even with that glue on there. But the problem was, is it ruined an entire lid for that ammo container? It just really just ripped that thing off there. And you can see that piece is still stuck. So that unfortunately is trash. So I've been having like, a few of these every batch kind of stick and just get ruined, which kind of sucks because it's seven hours for a full plate of this to print off. So still trying to figure that out. I'm probably gonna go ahead and just try putting it on the cryo grip plate and seeing if the cool plate will actually help this. Unfortunately, I can't really stop using Polymaker because I bought seven rolls of filament for different colors to print these off in. And I have had you know some success with ones and you know, they have turned out really good, but unfortunately they've been sticking to the plate way too bad and then also ruining the prints there. So still trying to figure that out, but my next step is throwing it on the cryo grip plate and seeing if that helps the issue. But I do think it is Polymaker related because again, it hasn't happened on any of the Bamboo Lab Pet G I've been using. And then the other thing was the ghosting that was on the models here that you can see. And that's a simple fix. Basically you just burn it off with a torch and it goes away pretty good. So. Saw that ghosting that was on there, and now that's pretty much gone. So that's been a quick, simple fix, not a big deal. It's just now the build plate issue, which I gotta clean the glue off of this and see if it's salvageable, but it's still that like 22 LR text is still just sticking to the plate, kind of like the outline of the just base plate here. So I don't wanna use another bamboo plate because these are like 30 to 40 bucks, which is not cheap. So we're gonna go ahead and try the cryo grip plate since they were kind enough to send it to me and hopefully that fixes the issue. I did have another failure on one of these urban Star Wars models over here. So these are the ones I've been printing out. It's another one that looks just like that one. And the first one kind of failed at the same point that this one did. So I got to figure out what's going on with that. The first time I thought it was me because in the slicer setting before I sent it to print, I didn't realize I had it as the cool plate, but I had the texture plate here from bamboo. And so maybe I thought that was the issue. So I used a different type of filament and made sure the build plate was correct, but still had the same issue, only this time was a little bit worse. Uh, this definitely made a lot more of a mess than the last one, but it seemed to fail about the same point, which sucks because that is a waste of a lot of filament. And that was kind of the amount that got wasted just getting to this point. So kind of a waste of filament twice on two 10 hour prints. I have been doing this overnight. I think I might have to keep an eye on this one if I do decide to try it again. I might actually try the cool plate and see if that works, but yeah, it looks like her <laughs> the legs actually snapped off. So so this week on the A1 Mini, I've been printing out stuff using Sunlose filament. Kind of went with the kind of a cool color combos. I actually had my wife pick these out because I just couldn't make up my mind, but I've been testing these out. I'll make a dedicated video with the Sunloose stuff here, but so far it's been awesome. And all this has been just on the A1 Mini because that's the one that's been open so far. Honestly, these print great. There's been no issues with any of these. No fails like that one model over there. And the colors just come out really cool. You can see here, this is just a dragon egg tea candle holder and a little fox. Probably nothing that I'm gonna sell, but just some stuff that I can print off and see how this filament looks. But these things look freaking awesome. 
So I've been using their black and green right here. And then this one, which is the black, gold, purple silk filament. And then down here, I've also been using their glow. And then the blue, green, purple, which is the last one that I've used on the A1 Mini here. So that stuff has been printing out great. I do love the colors. I like the kind of the dual and tri silks. Those seem to come out really cool, especially if you're looking for some cool colors on your models. This is definitely a great option. This is another one I did with the black and green, similar to the eSun one that I did. But this one turned out a little funky because I, I don't know if you could tell, obviously where it decided to change black, makes her kind of look like she's got black face. So I don't know how that uh, decided to swap it there. But on the other model, she's all green on the front and then all black on the back side using the eSun filament, same colors, but this one's a little, a little different kind of where it chose to uh, turn black. And then th these are just the two quick prints I did with the glow in the dark filament. That stuff printed out well. I just did these on the A1 Mini where I don't have an AMS system because I've heard and seen that you really don't wanna run this type of filament through the AMS just because it's abrasive and could cause issues. So to prevent that, I've just been running it on the A1 Mini where I don't have an AMS system. And so far they've came out really great. I do need to get like a UV light so I can really see how these things glow. You can kind of see it picked up on a video with all the lights here, but I haven't really had these exposed to light, especially any UV light, but still pretty cool option for some Halloween stuff. So BQ was kind enough to send me some more of their things. They did send me some build plates for the A1 Mini. Unfortunately, they didn't have the cryo grip, so they went ahead and sent me these ones right here, which is very similar to the Bamboo Lab ones. Really interested to see how these work. I can't imagine they don't work because everything from BQ has been awesome so far. Another thing they sent me is the Panda Nomi, which I'm sure you guys have seen these before. I'm gonna put it on the A1 over here because they did send me another light for the A1, which I was gonna put on there, but I didn't realize that there's only two slots on the back of these things. I thought there was three for some reason. So I do need to get like the extension strip to actually plug multiple things in there to have the AMS, a light and the Nomi on there. But for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and install the Nomi. The default one is to actually put it on the print head itself. And they did send me this cover here, but I did find that there's actually a model to where you can put it on the gantry instead. So I might try that, just something different. Plus there's a little bit less wire management that you have to deal with. So I might try that first and see how it turns out. And who knows, I might try it the other way too, just to, to do that. But I'll probably make a separate video going over that. But it is cool that um, they were kind enough to send that over. There are some things that you need to print off if you're gonna put it on the kind of where the printer head is. Um, you have to print off this extra cable organizer there that has a, another slot for the cable for the Nomi and then this top piece that goes on there as well. These files can be found on their website and then you just download them and print them off. And then I also found the mount for the actual gantry version on their website too. And then if you guys don't like the clear cover that they give you, they do have a couple other options on their website as well. But if you get on Maker's World, there's a ton of other crazy style models if you wanna do something a little bit different than that. So that's a cool thing. Is it functional? I don't know, I, we'll see, but it basically shows me everything that I can already see on the screen of the printer and then from the phone app. But it's just a way to kind of personalize your printer and then it does show you statuses and everything like that, which I think will be a benefit. So that way I don't have to open up my computer and check it or actually open up my phone or come check the screen. I can just look over and see the status of the print. So Ujoy Bio has been another great company to work with as far as let me test out their filaments. They sent me their full metallic series so I can do some test prints, which I've already done some, but I wanted to try all four in one print model, which is what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna be using their gold, titanium gray, copper, and iron black. And we're gonna be trying this model here from Matt Meyer Makes. It's this robotic turtle, which I think would be really cool. All right, so I got the filament loaded up and the colors somewhat on here. So basically the, this orange is gonna be the copper and then the gold is obviously gonna be this yellow here and then got the other two here as well. So the only other thing I'm doing is just using the generic PLA silk setting and then I adjusted the temperatures to their recommendation that they sent me of 210 to 230 as far as the nozzle temperature. So that is the only thing I'm gonna do. And so far those settings have worked perfectly on other prints but we're gonna go ahead and I am actually gonna make this thing larger. I decided on 135% scale and that's gonna be right at two days and six minutes for the total time to print. We're gonna be using 442.55 grams total for the model. 
Luckily, only 206 grams of flushed, which isn't great, it's still a lot, but for this amount of filament changes at 892, I feel like that's doable. With a grand total of 704.5 grams of filament used, so this model takes a lot of filament. All right, so moment of truth. I did use the cryo grip plate on these and didn't use any glue. I just did a bed temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. So let's see how these come off. So far, so good. Some slight ghosting on this. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but just a little bit of ghosting on the plate, but nothing as bad as the other stuff. So yeah, I definitely think I'm gonna have to start using this with the Polybaker Pet G. Although I do prefer the texturing on the PEI plate, this will definitely do if it'll keep the prints from getting ruined. And just to make sure, I went ahead and printed off another batch just to make sure. So we're gonna try that. And yeah, this stuff comes off way better on this cryo grip plate. Yeah, much better on there. There is still, like I said, a little bit of a ghosting on there, but that's not a big deal. It's not really showing up on these to where I have to even use the torch on here. So that's nice. And I also printed off the bottoms of these just to test those out and they came off just as good as well. And I didn't even clean the plate between those prints and everything worked out great. So if you've been having issues printing off Polymaker's Pet G on the PEI plate, go ahead and try the cryo grip because that has worked. When you're in the slicer program and you change it over to the cool plate using pet g it gives you a warning saying it's not compatible but all you have to do is go in and adjust the temperature because for some reason it sets it at zero for the cool plate so i just changed it to 50 degrees celsius and it worked just fine and no issues so i'm going to work on taking pictures of these updated ammo containers since i did change over from pla to pet g got to update the pictures and a little bit of the description on the etsy ad so i got to do that i got to move some things around to get set up for photos which is always real fun. And then I did a red, white, and blue theme since 4th of July is coming up. So one of the customers that actually picked these up in person uh, came up with that idea. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I did red, white, and blue. So hopefully that'll be a good sale for the upcoming 4th of July. And then I got to do some filament organization because I have filament everywhere and don't know what to do with it all. And I have 15 rolls coming from Polymaker this week for a upcoming project I'm gonna do. So that's going to add a lot more to this space that is already overfilled with filament. So I gotta figure out what to do with that. And if you wanna know how that 50 hour print with that robot turtle comes out with the Ujoy Bio filament, that will be a separate video. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you'll be notified when that video comes out. And until that point, go ahead and check out these videos right here.